morning, everybody. Uh, we apologize for some but some technical issues. And today we're going to be looking at are we, are we drive our engagement and support educators, you know, across the way to be able to take advantage of our solutions for remote learning. And today, why is this very important? Is because we see change to be something that is very disruptive. Uh, change is more like a move train you have to get on it otherwise it's going to drop you off and today we are going to be looking at how best can we support you and how best you take advantage of the solutions whether you run a school whether you are an educator in a school or whether you're a school uh, administrator so look at various aspects of how how our solutions particularly looking at teams for education plays a very significant role in driving that my name is Zubat Sadeh Vaughan. I work for Microsoft. I'm education lead for Microsoft. And today we are having this engagement with our partner, Signal Alliance. And this is the reason why we are driving this is simply because we have a mission to empower every student and every, every teacher on the planet had to achieve more. We strongly believe that educators are the ones that shape our heroes. We believe that educators play a very significant role in enabling young people to thrive in the global world of today and even tomorrow, which means that young people would need to have skills that they need to try, certain skills like critical thinking, cognitive thinking, collaboration, communication, you know, algorithmic thinking, creativity, curiosity. These are skills that young people need to have, problem solving inclusive, and we consider educators to be the custodian of such success by helping young people to thrive. But at the same time, we believe that technology plays a very critical role in driving this kind of change. And part of what we are looking at today is to see how do you take advantage of technology to be able to drive this change wherever you are as an educator, wherever you are as a teacher. So as we go ahead today, I'm going to be sharing with you a few tips. I'm also going to be bringing up my slide for you to see. And so please put your questions by the put your questions by the chat by the chat window below. And that's going to help us to also understand where you're coming from. What are the what are the things that are also very much important to you? And we can see how best to support you. I'm just going to pause for two seconds or three seconds while my deck comes up. Okay. So today we today we have we are faced with very unique challenges, like I said earlier. And part of the challenge that we see, or part of the challenge that we see around us, is the need for us to be able to prepare young people, like we said earlier, to take advantage of our solutions. The need for us to work together collaboratively, and the need for us to take advantage of education solutions. So that's particularly the role that we have as educators. That's our role as as change makers. That's our role as uh, as impact drivers. And so today it's more like looking at what applications, what solutions already exist that you can take advantage of and how do you take advantage of those solutions. So today Microsoft is supporting a lot of schools. Microsoft is supporting a lot of organizations and um, precisely Microsoft is supporting a lot of educators by taking advantage of a solution that we call the Teams for Education Hub. A Teams for Education Hub is considered as a central point, as considered as a central place and hub, just a single hub that allows students and teachers to be able to work together, to be able to come together and collaborate and also provides the platform for professional development for individuals. This platform makes it possible for people, irrespective of the location that they are in, particularly as educators, to still be able to communicate with their students and at the same time be able to achieve learning. Learning basically means that students are, are, are getting access to new information, students are able to try out new things and practice, and definitely students are able to take advantage of these opportunities to aid their growth and to aid their learning. So what is Teams for Education? Like I said earlier, Teams for Education simply is a central platform whereby students come together and at the same time, educators meet with students to set up classes, to set up environments for learning and also to share resources that aid their learning. So what does that mean? It simply means that think of Teams for Education as that central hub whereby if you have 
10 students in your classroom or you have 20 students in your classroom, irrespective of the number of students that you have in your classroom, you can still engage these students remotely. You can create assignments and give assignments to these students, and at the same time, you can grade their work. So that is what Teams for Education is. And today I'm going to do some demos. I'm going to show you some few things on how that can be done. And at the same time, the idea is to push you in the path of you going ahead to try that out for yourself, or you going ahead to make sure you, you are able to take advantage of such solutions within your space and within your network. Now, what does this mean? It means that when you whenever you decide to whenever you decide to go remote, whenever you decide to go distance learning, you are coming from a standpoint of a few things that you already know. So we are not just saying to you that automatically you should have to condemn the previous applications that you are using, or we are not saying to you that okay, well, this time at this time in time or this point in time, you have to let go of all the applications that you have been using, like module, like turn it in. But what we see that we have have beautiful integrations with other applications and this makes it possible for you as an educator to be able to use other things that you have you know within your environment now for those people that already have tools like 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 modo or for instance or like wiki it means that you can have an integration of teams and, and at the same time still be able to make calls at the same time, still be able to engage with people within the community and at the same time, still be able to do things like collaboration because that is the whole idea of teams. It means it means that you are able to collaborate and work together with other teachers. You're able to collaborate and work together with other members of the school as you go ahead, you know, in your engagement. So that's what the Teams for Education does. And right now, before I before I really go further, I would really like to show some quick demos and show you an idea of what this would look like when you decide to set up Teams for education within your environment and other tips that you need to have as an educator. Before we go into the real setup and the demo, what are the success tips that educators need to have when it comes to distance learning? This is very important to have this foundation and to know that yes, technology does not basically re replace you as an educator. Your role as an educator or your role as a teacher is still distinct. Your role as a teacher is still unique. Where you come in is provide is by leverage. Where technology comes in is to provide an avenue for you to be able to engage your students remotely irrespective of the location that they have is to be able to provide a platform for you so that you can do the things that you would technology does not take your role away neither does it replace you but simply provides a platform simply provides an avenue provides an environment for you to be able to do distance learning and for you to be able to engage with your students so i'm just going to stop sharing my video for a moment and i'm going to show share with you live on how you can make use of teams in your classroom and what you can do as an educator with the, the with, with, or with the head of the Mac. So now, like I said earlier, the Teams for Education platform provides you a central space for collaboration. What you currently see here is Teams for Education, which means that I have a tenant or I have an account that has already been set up for me to be able to use Microsoft Teams for Education. Now, as teachers, you are probably focused with the idea of how do I set up a class? and how do I grade my students? And how at the same time am I able to see the textbook or the notebook of my students or the students in my classroom? For that to happen, it simply means that you have the Teams for Education set up by, for you by your school. When you have your Teams for Education already set up for you in your school, the next question is how do you now connect on the platform and how do you now begin to make use of classes? When you launch the Teams for Education interface or you launch the Teams for Education hub, on the left corner, on the top left corner, you would see what we call the activity icon. 
the activity icon simply shows that should, gives you an idea of notifications and gives gives you an idea of important information and important messages that you are not supposed to miss in the in the course of your engagement. It simply means that somebody has mentioned you or a student is trying to reach out to you for an assignment that he or she needs to continue or a colleague is trying to get your assistance in getting something done or there's an important message from the administrator or the school head or the school lead. So when I click on the activity window here or the activity icon here, it gives me top insights and gives me top messages that are very important that I do not have to miss that I have to follow up on. So I can, as you can see, it shows the assignments that have been assigned to students in the class. And at the same time, it also shows other important information like classwork that has been done and other things like that that people need to engage on. Now, what about the chat window? The chat window simply means that it's providing an opportunity for you to have direct conversations or any personal conversations with people. This could be your student as a teacher or it could be your colleague as an educator as well. So it provides you that, part, that environment in which you can collaborate with these people, provides you the environment in which you can communicate with them and at the same time provides you an environment whereby you can share information that only those people should have access to within the environment. So that's what the chat window does for you. So it's more like a we space, a space for direct communication and also a space for file sharing, which means if I want to share a file with this individual here, I can come into files and at the same time I can type in the information or upload the particular file that I need to share with the individual. Now, what about Teams? Like I said earlier, Teams is basically where you set up your team. But Teams for Education makes it possible for you to set up four different types of teams based on the existing templates that we have. If I come to the top corner right here, I click on join or create a team. And from here, I can determine to say, okay, well, I want to create a team. It's going to ask me that what kind of team do I want to create? Do I want to create a class? Do I want to create a professional learning community? What kind of team exactly would I love to create? So it gives me the opportunity, gives me the option to be able to choose from, which means I can choose from class. I can say, okay, I want to set up a professional learning community, in which case only educators are going to be the ones to be able to come on board or I want to set up a staff environment. The staff environment precisely in that case could mean a place for teachers and other people within the environment to come together or to collaborate. So from there, I can determine what I want to set up or what kind of platform I would like to I'm mean, hoping that people can see on the screen or just try to look at the questions. So maybe you may have to reshare your screen. You know, your screen is not showing. Hello, button there. Yes. Okay. So yeah, on the sorry. on the on the bottom of the screen, can you see my image? Yes, we can see your screen now. It's okay now. Okay. What? So do you see the text? That do you see the image I'm displaying, or you see my picture? What do you see? No, we see the image. Your presentation. Your the team select the teams a uh, team type. We can see that. OK, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, I wanted to be sure that people I wanted to be sure that people uh, uh, who are actually listening to us can also see that. OK, so at the same time, I'm just going to go back a little. I'm just going to cancel this so that people can be carried along. And so like I said earlier, you can determine to set different types of team within Microsoft Teams. That means that you can set up an environment for all the teachers to be able to communicate, or you can also set up an environment for students and teachers to meet, which is going to be called a classroom. Or at the same time, you can set up a space for people who are administrative members of the institution to work together to collaborate. So in that situation, what you have is what we call the staff option. At the other side of it, you have the other option, which is that that can now become a potential place for you to have things like school clubs. So now, given this explanation or given this, uh, given this background information, we are now going to make an attempt to create what we call a class. So here I click on class. When I click on class here, I can type in the name and I can say webinar just for a demo. I'm just going to give it the name webinar 13th May. Mind you, this could be SS1. This could be SS3, this could be SS4, SS, SS, SS3A, SS3B, SS3C. So just to use something that is more relatable, I'm going to use SS1F. 
So I'm setting up my class as a class teacher in SS1 half. So I click on SS1 half and I say next. When I say next, the next thing is for me to add the students in this class so I can determine what the students are and I can say Look for students that are already existing here. I'm going to choose Samuel Perkins. Uh, sorry, Sunde. Yes, go uh, ahead. Sunde, I think some people still can't see your screen because we're saying the screen is not showing here. So we're trying to be sure that. Um, do you mean to say you, do not, to see the, sure you that do not see the screen at all? Yeah, that's what we're seeing here. Um, Okay, so I can see um, in the Q and A section that um, we cannot see your screen. Okay. So it seems they can't see the demo environment that you're showing. Well, it's very important to get the feedback to know what they are seeing. What do you see mm. as as the producer? Please, can you type here what you can see? Um, well, I'm do seeing you, a small you see my screen, screen here. Yeah, I can only see a small screen here, but um, I guess people can't see the full screen. They I can mean, only you see, see your face. Yes. They can only yes, see your face. Yes, if they're seeing my face, okay. can you just can you just check to see that what what you are sharing is my is the presentation and not my my face? Yes. Because sorry. Okay. 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 I think the presentation. Oh. Okay. Can we go to the demo again? Yes. We fixed it, so we can see your screen now. OK. All right, so I'm just going to go. I'm just going to skip this and I'm going to I'm going to make an attempt to start all over. We apologize for that and I'm going to start all over just to be sure that we have people engaged. So remember when I started at first, I talked about how Microsoft Teams integrates with existing applica applications and existing interfaces or tools that people already have that they are already used to. So when I click on the app launcher at the extreme top corner left here, I can see all the applications that Microsoft Teams currently allows or the O365 interface allows each person within the school or each user that has an account to be able to use. So that means Outlook, OneDrive, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, SharePoint and Teams. But today we are focusing on Teams, which is part of the O365 or part of the M365 as the case would be. When you launch Teams, which could be launched by clicking from teams.microsoft.com or from the app launcher by clicking on office or portal.office.com, you would find an environment that comes up like this, which is Teams. Microsoft Teams for Education and Environment now makes it possible for people to be able to collaborate and for people to be able to collaborate communicate. It simply means that individuals or teachers that are part of the school environment can continue the normal school activities that they used to have with their students from the locations that they are in. So here. Sorry, I, do, uh, I think some of this microphone is not muted. Uh, Sunday, your microphone is muted. Baba Sunday, your microphone is muted. Yeah, I think somebody muted me, but that's fine. I'm muted Sorry. now. Yeah, yeah. So, so as I was saying, the, the 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 Teams environment provides that platform for people to be able to engage, provides that platform for teachers and for individuals within the school environment to be able to collaborate and at the same time have the experience that they would need to have. More like they're still in a normal school environment with a physical school environment now. So it is building, it is bringing the physical environment, the physical experiences into the virtual space. That is, people are able to do the conventional things that they will be, they would have been able to do, taking advantage of technology. When you launch the Microsoft Teams platform, at the top left, uh, top corner left, you would see the activity icon. 
The activity icon, which looks like the bell icon, it's simply to call your attention to very important information that you do not have to miss as a student or as a teacher or as somebody that is part of that environment. It's simply saying to you that this is very important and you must not miss out on this very important information. So that's what the environment does. But at the same time, what about other things that have to do with assignments of the students or assignments that have been shared with the students? This environment also makes it possible for people to be able to see notifications that are also important for them that are time bound. For instance, a teacher might give assignments to the students that they have to turn in in the next three or four days. So if people are missing out on their notifications, they're definitely going to miss out on the assignments because they did not see a notification for that. So the Microsoft Teams environment provides a simplified format or a simplified look that makes students and people within the educator education community to be able to catch up with very re relevant information and take actions that are required of them. The next icon that we see below here is called chat. The chat icon simply means that you provide you an opportunity to have a direct conversation with somebody within the environment. So this could be student to student, it could be teacher to teacher, Whoever it provides that environment that can be, it, it provides that environment, that unique environment for individuals to be able to have direct conversations with one another. Now, what about Teams? The Teams environment simply is where you set up a class or where you set up a team or where you set up an environment and where you set up a, a professional learning community or a place for people to collaborate. Here, I'm going to go back to the default page for Teams, which shows me all the existing Teams that I have. But I'm also going to come to the top corner right here to click on Join or Create a Team. And I say Create a Team. In this situation here, the idea is that I want to now, that's the Microsoft. but Microsoft Teams for Education comes with four default templates that can be chosen from. The first one is class, the next one is a professional learning community, the third one is staff, and the fourth one is order. Class is simply a space for students and teachers to have discussions and to meet and to collaborate together. The professional learning community simply is a space for everybody who is a part of the educator community to do some work together, like co-creation of content. For instance, if there are three math teachers in a school and you want to work on the same content together, so it means that you have a space for you to engage and do your work together in your and, and work on your materials. At the same time, you are able to share very relevant information and very relevant learning paths that would be required for you in your professional learning journey. The staff simply means that it's whereby you can human resource, teacher welfare, administration, planning, statistics, research, and every other kind of unit that needs to be part of the administrative arm of the institution, whether it's a primary school or a secondary school at a tertiary institution. The other aspect has to do with a template where you can use to build up a space for study groups for clubs in the school. It could be dance clubs, or it could be STEM clubs, or it could be science clubs, dependent on the need that you have. We have seen some schools go as far as setting up PTA associations whereby they bring the parents, teachers and into one single environment and they can collaborate and talk about very important information that has to do with the growth of their students and the children. For this session, we are just going to focus on the class session, which means that we are going to try to set up a class. So here I'm going to click on class. By clicking on class, I have to give it a name. So I can give it a name and say SS to he and I say next. This is a demo class. But you could give this any description that's going to help every other person to be able to find their class. And then you say next. So here I can decide to now say, look for students in the class. The idea is that the IT administrator would have created an account for each student and each teacher within the institution. At the back so here, we are taking the assumption that there are students already in my, in my class or in the school, and I'm just going to look for the students that are supposed to be part of the SS2HE class. I'm going to select on Samuel Perkins. So we could just leave it as Samuel for now. I'm just trying to see if I could find any other students. Okay, I could look for Sandy. And I'm going to add Sandy Dodson. And I will say add. I can decide to have the teacher as well. 
I am not just the only teacher in that class, or there are other teachers that need to be added there. So now I'm going to look for the teacher. I'm going to look for myself, add myself as a teacher. And I will close. So I've set up the class already, and the same way you would have students come into a particular block of a school environment, and I've put them in a particular block of the Microsoft Teams for Education environment. Here, I've set up the class for them to collaborate, the class for assignments, the class for them to share their materials, and the classroom environments for them to discuss on very relevant topics that has to do with the academic journey. Next year, I can start a conversation and I can decide to make an announcement and say to the students that welcome to a new class or welcome to the new term or welcome to the new week. So it could be announcement. And I can say. So here I've given it a name, announcement, welcome address and information, and I can put in any other information I need to put there. I can also nominate and say someone is going to be the class captain for this class. So I can decide to do some personalization and change the color scheme and turn into like a bunt orange. So in this case, I can also determine to make this important announcement so the students don't have to say it. If I do not want them to be able to reply, I can now come to the board and say you and moderators can reply. If I want to post this across many classes, I just have to click on the post in multiple channels. But since I'm not going to be doing that, I just have to now send in my announcement. I might decide to add some emojis at the bottom there, or I might decide to add some GIF. Now that I'm done with this, I just have to post my assignment now and post the announcement and every member of this environment or every member of the class is going to see this assignment that I'm sharing with them. I'm sharing the announcement I'm sharing with them. But what if I want to now upload class materials? You will see this icon here that says class materials. This is simply a space, a safe space for the teachers to upload materials that are only read only. As an educator, you are really focused and, and concerned about the safety of the materials that you share so that the students do not accidentally delete them or the students don't even mess them up. So Microsoft Teams for Education provides that platform for you, a safe, a safe folder whereby you can keep, mat keep materials and only you will be able to have access or have edit, uh, read and write access to the files that you put there. The students will only be able to view these materials and they're not going to be able to edit it. As it says here, read only class files go here. Students can read these files, but only teachers can edit. So now that we've looked into the setting up of a class, what if you have a new student that has just decided to have, that just decided to join the school? You do not have to set, go back to the setting page. You just have to come to the SS2E here and you click on the ellipsis and you add a member to the class. When you click on add a member, it's going to ask you to put the name of the students that you would like to add to this class. And you search for the name of that student within the school environment. And at the same time, you just add a student to the classroom. So it's probably going to say these students already exist in the class because that's an existing student. But that's just the easy way for you to add more students to the classroom. Now that we are done setting up our class and now that we are done setting up students in the classroom, Microsoft Teams also offers you an integration with Class Notebook. Class Notebook is an offshoot of OneNote, which means that it provides a notebook for every student in the class to use. We are going to make an attempt to set up our Class Notebook now. And the idea here is to help students to have a central space whereby they can put all of their materials and at the same time the teacher can also engage with them. In the one notebook, there are three options or there are three sections that a one notebook does have. The first section is called the collaboration space, which is a space for the teacher and the students to come together to collaborate and for everyone to work together more like a whiteboard. The content library is simply a space whereby the teacher can edit similar to the class materials folder and only the students can view but they cannot edit any of the materials there. The student notebook is simply a space for students to put in their own personal stuff like their assignments and their quizzes and only the teacher can see what the student is doing. So anything that is in the student notebook is only available to that particular student, the individual student and the teacher. Other students and members of the class do not have access to it. We're just going to click on next here. 
And I can determine to say the kind of folder that I would like to see in the notebook of everybody in SS2 here. I have the handouts already, class notes, homework, quizzes. I might decide to add a new section and just call it feedback. Maybe there are certain things that the teacher, the students would like to communicate to me and would like it to be in a different folder and does not want it to be openly available to everybody. So every student is going to have the, the feedback section in their one notebook. Now I'm going to click on create. And this is going to take about 10 to about 30 seconds to be able to get the class notebook set up. Once you have the class notebook set up, you do not need to set it up again. The beautiful aspect of it again is that it automatically creates the same a single notebook with the same setup and the same section for all students that you have in the classroom. So which means you do not have to manually do that. So it simply takes the names of the students within the Teams environment in that class and sets up the class notebook for each of the students within the class. Now, to make this view go bigger, I'm just going to expand the view. I'm going to view the navigation pane. By the now, our one notebook is ready, and it means it's ready for the class. I have the navigation pane. And I'm going to review the navigation pane by the left here. And you can see the collaboration space that I talked about. You also can find that you see Samuel Perkins and Sandy Dodson, which means that these are the two other students that we currently have in this class. If we have more than these students in the class, you're going to see many more of them. Just for you to have a better idea of what the OneNote class notebook looks like, I'm going to leave this environment and go to an existing class that I had before now, which has information already populated in it. I would like to choose the physical science class. In the physical science class, I'm going to go to the class notebook. And in the class notebook now, I'm going to see the notebook for each of the students in the physical science class, and I'm going to see what they have in their notebooks. The same way we expanded the tab, I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to expand the navigation pane. And you can see all of the students in this class, Alex, Ashley, Ella, Fatima, Henry, Omar, Robin, Rosé, Samuel, and Sandy, and the rest of the students, you all see their notebooks. So as a teacher, you have a central space for you to collect the notes of all of your students. Maybe it's the homework you've given to them or the quizzes or the assignments they have asked them to work, uh, to work on. If I click on Fatima here, I can see class notes. And I can see math notes. I can see geometry notes. And if Fatima has anything on geometry, I'm going to see it here. I can see algebraic equations. So this is just like Fatima's notebook that is supporting personalized learning for her. Sorry, excuse me. That's supporting personalized learning for her. Now, the next part here is that we want to look into a notebook of some students and display the use of what we call accessibility. Some people are curious about how this would help students that are visually impaired or students that have some kind of not that have some kind of reading challenge. Microsoft embraces accessibility and inclusion, and we have what we call the learning tools, which makes it possible for us to be able to cater for students that have very specific or special needs within our classroom. Here we are going to look into the one note and we're going to look into the immersive reader. When I click on view on the top here, at first I'm going to click on where we have some text so we can see how the immersive reader works. So this is what is urgent and this is a notebook or a quiz of Adele. So I click here on view. When I click on view, I can choose the immersive reader option. And when I click on immersive reader it's going to launch the environment for me and show how and show how this can be engaged or this can be used within the environment okay so here for every student who is in the classroom they can click on the play button and this is going to have like a voice that is being played out okay now it's not just like a read out loud but they also have additional things that they can do with the learning tools, particularly the immersive reader. If they want to make this faster, they only have to take it to or store it towards the titles or change the voice from female to male as the case would be preferred. 
what if this just feels too clustered for me as a student and I'm struggling to read the word? I can increase the text size and at the same time, I can increase the spacing between the lines so the reading is easier for me to read. Some students would rather prefer to have a blackboard why some students would prefer to have like a yellow board or even a white board. The advantage here is that it makes it easy for people to be able to choose what is of preference to them and this embraces personalized learning. They can change the text, they can change the font of the text if they do not like what they currently see and choose something entirely different or something that is easier for them to enjoy. Remember, personalized learning is what we want to prioritize. I want to be sure that the learning experience is actually very cool for the students. Now, given this understanding, the next thing is how do we now look at other features that are part of this amazing interface? What about students that are still trying to learn pronunciation? We have the syllables here and the syllables can actually make it easy for for the students to begin to learn the pronunciation of certain at the same time at the same time they can decide to enable nouns or verbs just for them to know which one is a noun and which one is a verb adjectives adverbs so if student is still trying to understand the parts of speech can click on the noun and it's going to make it in purple or even change the color and at the same time can have show labels with the show labels, it simply means it's showing the label for each word in the in the in the sentence. Now that we have this sorted, or now that the student is able to enable this and do this personal settings, now let's go into the reading preferences that the students can also enable. We can also enable what we call the picture dictionary. The picture dictionary helps students, particularly when they are still trying to learn a new word and to know what the meaning of that new word is. So when I come to a particular word and I click on it, the picture dictionary is going to give me a representation of what that word looks like. And that helps me as a learner in beginning to gain, uh, to increase my knowledge of the meaning of words. I can, I'm able to connect a pictorial representation of a particular word to what I see. At the same time, I can decide to say, I want to translate this. So this currently supports over 60 languages, which means that the translation is also available for people to use, particularly when they do not even have that, when they do not even have the knowledge or they are able to do that kind of engagement. Now, now that we are able to look at what the learning tools environment looks like, we are going to go back into the Microsoft Teams environment. Uh, we are now going to look at other things and other features that make available or that are available for the students to be able to use. When we we'll go back into the physical science group, part of what we want to look, look at here is how do we create assignments and how do we create great books for students. As a teacher, you are really focused on assessing the growth of your students and being able to set up assignments for the students. So we are just going to go to assignments on the tab here and we're going to make an attempt to create an assignment for the students in a physical science class or as the, as the case would be for your own particular class. So here I'm going to create or click on create. When I click on create I have two options. I can say assignment or I can say quizzes. We are going to use the quiz option here. The assignment option makes it possible for you to be able to put in written text or have the students to do things in a particular way or even have rubrics. But well, for this session, we're just going to use the, the, the forms and we're going to look into multiple choice questions. Because I would like to create one and just show you how this is done, I'm going to click on new form. And when we click on new form here, it's going to open forms.office.com. Forms.office.com now makes it possible for you to be able to set up forms for opinion polling or to set up quizzes for multiple choice questions to be able to gauge the knowledge gaps or the gauge the knowledge of the students. So notes, I'm clicking on new quiz and not new form because you cannot have the quiz functionality in the form option. So I click on new quiz and I can give this quiz a name and I can say SS2 he first week test or I can say third term first week test. 
And here I'm just going to add, and I can add a multiple choice question. And just for example, I can say which of this Microsoft has built in some intelligent services into this, which makes it possible for you to get things done faster. When I click on which of this is not which of this which of this is not a sorry, apologies. So I can type red here, and automatically it suggests other colors for me on the bottom of the next one. All I just have to do is to select the ones I want to use, and I can say orange, purple, yellow, green, magenta till blue. So in this situation, there are multiple right answers. As a teacher, I have to come to the bottom here and click on multiple answers. And when I click on multiple answers, it makes it possible for me to select the right answers. And I can say definitely orange is not a primary color, purple is not, green is not, magenta is, magenta is not, teal, and teal is not, and blue is. I can say one point for answering this question correctly. You don't want your students to miss out a particular question. You click on required, which means it is mandatory for them to answer all the questions. And I say add new. Here, I can make an example with a math question. For me to do that, I'm going to delete this first. I'm going to say add new. I'm going to come to choice here. And I'm going to come to the math ellipsis by the bottom right to click on math. When I click on math, I can say solve for X. And I come here and I say X square plus 3X minus 9 equals to 0. And I say OK. What happens here is that the system is going to make an attempt to solve the question for you. OK, so I'm going to edit the question so we see more options and I'm going to say, OK, no, that's the error. So X squared plus 3X minus 9 equals to 0. And here it automatically solves the question and provides one right answer and three other wrong answers and selects them. It saves your time as a teacher and you're able to build questions faster. It automatically puts the points and select other configuration and, say, and answers that you have selected in the previous question. If you click on hard new, it's going to give you question ideas based on the previous question, which means that it's also thinking for you and trying to see how best can I help you to get your questions rolled out in time. If I do not like all of these questions, I only like the second and third one, I'm just going to click on the second and third one and I would say add selected. Here, these questions have been selected. I've finished setting up my first week test for SS2E and I'm going to come back here and I'll click on create and I'm going to click on quiz. When I click on quiz, I'm going to have the options to choose from. What I have to do is to choose the last one, which is already here, SS2E third term first week test. And I would say next. It's going to hack me now to assign this work or to assign this assignment to particular students or to the entire students on the class physical science. Here, I am faced with the challenge of who should I give this assignment to, when should this assignment be rolled out, and when should this assignment be turned in. Microsoft Teams for Education makes it possible for you to do all of that from just few clicks. If there are certain instructions the teacher would like to give to them, you give the instructions how here. If there's a particular rubric that you want to give to them, maybe it's a comprehension test, you put the rubric here. And if this is just for few students that missed the previous test and it's, a, as in it's a reorganized test, you can just decide who and who should get the test here. And I can say this is just for James, for Sydney, for Henry, and for Johnny. And I leave it here. It says four students already selected. I have to edit the turn in time and I want to determine who should do this. I mean, when they should turn this assignment or return this assignment. If this is going to be immediately after the class, I can just leave the schedule into assigning feature unchecked and I can change the time and say allow people to turn this in by 11.59 a.m. today. And I can say close date is also 11.59. It means late turn-ins would not be allowed from the students. 
assignment is going to be posted immediately and the students are not going to be able to turn in the assignment after this time. If you want them to be able to do that, you just have to uncheck the close date and you say done. And then you come to the top here and you assign. Assignment has now been assigned to the students within the class and every student that is part of that class is going to see the assignment. So what do you do with grades? Now, when it comes to grades here, the idea of what you are faced with is to be able to determine or to be able to look at the scores of the students, all the scores of the students, what their scores are, what they are, and also be able to generate it in Excel. So the grade function or the grade feature makes it possible for the teacher to eliminate errors that come from manually trying to pull up the scores of the students and manually trying to add them up or even manually trying to pull their scores and putting it on Excel. So there are two errors or two mistakes that can be avoided. The first one is picking the scores. The second one is summing the scores. You might avoid the second one because you're using Excel and automatically sums their scores up for you. But what if you have the error in pulling the scores of each of the students where you have about 40 or 50 of them in your classroom. The grade, the grade book makes it possible for you to export the results of all of the students and at the same time that makes it easy for you. You can click and export to Excel and if there's another learning management system that you used earlier like we talked about maybe Moodle or something like that, you can integrate this and that can help you to have a good view of the grades of your students for all the quizzes and tests that they have completed. Let's say after you note you saw you rolled out the test, you discover that something was supposed to be done. You discover that two students or three students in your class are also from the same family. They're in the same class. They're probably a triplet, and you want to minimize the opportunities for them to be able to cheat. You go back to the forms environment even after you've rolled it out, and you can click on the ellipses and click on settings. And here you shuffle the questions. When you shuffle the questions, the questions are going to be rearranged like would have for a jam, and then you could even customize the thank you message if you so if you so wish to do that and you can make sure that each person after submitting is able to see response. In some cases, you do not want them to see their immediate scores after the test. You have to uncheck on the option here yeah, and this means that people are not going to see the scores immediately after they finish the test. Now you've rolled out the test, you've assigned it to the students. What else can you do with Microsoft Teams for Education? You can manage the timetable of your students so that they don't meet, mix their classes. And that can be easily done from the calendar feature or calendar app that you see integrated into Teams. When you click on the calendar app, you can see here that there's a class that says Chemistry SS2. So for every class that you are taking, all you just have to do is to click on the time that you want that to happen. It's going to open the calendar app for you. And here you type in the name of that class or maybe the session. You had in the students that you want to be there or maybe you have an external teacher that is going to be teaching them. You can add the email of the external teacher, even if the person is not part of your school. Or maybe they are going to be looking at a new topic on robotics or something that is completely different. So you can add the email address of the external teacher to be there as well. You distribute this to the channel that you want this to go to, and you can say physical science subject or SS1. So let us assume. So we're just going to use the class that we created. Uh, we are going to look for the demo class. SS2E. OK, and we'll say general. So everybody in SS2 he is going to receive this automatically. You don't have to call them. You don't have to start sending reminders because it's going to go on their app and they're going to see on their mobile phones or their tablets or they're going to see that they have a class with reminders put there for them and they can have a view at the calendars. This is very helpful when parents are trying to plan on how they want to help their students to get on board when they want to release their tablets or release their computer or their phones. It helps everybody to know, okay, when do I have a next class and how do I not miss my class? There's also the option for you to use the scheduling assistant. You want to have a meeting with other teachers or you want to have a meeting with the leadership. You can get to know who is available at what time or the other because this is also this also has the Outlook integration. The other part again, which is part of what we talked about, is being able to have calls with students or being able to have calls with members of the school. So here I can easily decide to have a direct call. I can have a video call or I can even decide to have a voice call. 
So depending on the need, I can decide, so this is where I want to call. The good part again is that the Microsoft Teams for Education provides you the admin interface or the admin center where you can roll out policies that are basically, de de basically dependent on the need that you have seen. Policies like disabling charts in meetings so that when a class is going on, some students are not charting behind, you can disable that from the admin interface. Policies like allowing students to be able to set up meetings or private meetings, you can also disable that and allow only a certain group of people to be able to set up private meetings. So the Teams for Education is actually a very robust interface that provides the platform for teachers, for students, for school owners and educators to come together to learn. Microsoft has also put in a lot of resources to help you when it comes to your professional development as an educator. If you go to the website education.microsoft.com, this website has a whole lot of resources that can support you when it comes to remote learning. You would see on the top here, you see distance learning, but that's not just what the site is all about. The site does have the learning pathway for educators, which means that as an educator, you can embrace pathways that would help you in your own professional journey and you are taking ownership of your own growth. You get badges for courses that you have completed. You also get certificates for all the courses that you have completed. So the Microsoft Educator Center is one thing that I would suggest that you all should go and look into. You all as an educator or every educator here that is listening to me should take some time, go up on the site education.microsoft.com and that's going to make it possible for you to be able to catch up on your own professional journey and also do many other things such as taking courses that can include your that can increase your relevance. Trust me, you would find courses like Teach SDG. So this is not just a matter of tech or a matter of Microsoft technology, but it's also a platform for you to learn other things that you probably do not have access to the content and you get to have this access for free. So in this situation, it makes it possible for everybody to be able to embrace their professional journey easily. It makes it easy for everybody to learn one or two new things. And at the same time, they are proud of their moments. They are proud of their achievements and they can find themselves doing amazing things for themselves. So that's what the Teams for uh, the Microsoft Teams for Education interface allows you to do. And like I said earlier, my charge is that take some time to look into the environment, take some time to try it out, take some courses by yourself. And for every course that you complete, you get your certificates, you get your badges, and that will be able to confirm to you that yes, you are duly or you are truly embracing remote learning. You are duly and embracing remote teaching. So here, this is what the platform looks like, and there are quite a number of courses that you can take. We'll go back to the Teams for Education interface and just to round off because our time is fast. is to tell you that this is the goal of the that brings everything into a central space, like I talked about earlier. From meetings, to calls, to calendars, to assignments, to quizzes, to communication, to file sharing. It makes it possible for you to get everything done. the comfort of your device and even if you have a tablet or you have a computer this has been fully optimized for you so that you can work with your students and make sure that remote learning does not stop as educators we have we are, like i said earlier we are faced with different realities and our goal is not just to Provide learning for our students to support them in your entire will be run. And I'm just going to you that every inquiry that you'd have how to deploy this for your school, for every inquiry you would have about how to set this up for your school, please reach out to Signal Alliance, send them an email, send them a message. I'm sure they're happy to support you. They're happy to guide you on how your school can onboard. And you might just be surprised that they have a lot of freebies that you can take advantage of. For example, the O365A1, which is available to every institution in Nigeria and globally for free at no at zero dollars it simply means that you can set up teams and you can get the o 365 a1 license at zero dollars so reach out to signal alliance on how to set up on how they can get you a partner to help its own board and how you can your school and how you as an educator can begin to take advantage of all of these offers so that's going to be the final words from me and i'm just going to hand over to the producer and i want to thank you all for listening and thank you all for taking time to join the webinar today Okay, yeah, uh, but thank you so much. This is Kenneth Ufomba. I work for Signal Alliance. Thanks for uh, a wonderful session. And uh, Signal Alliance is positioned to support all schools, ensure that the students have very effective learning. 
But just a little about Signal Alliance, a little more about Signal Alliance. Signal Alliance is uh, arguably the Microsoft biggest partner in Nigeria, and we also provide, um, we are a cloud solution provider. And what that means is that we can provision your licenses, both the paid versions and the free versions within less than five minutes. Okay, so we, we will be expecting to get feedbacks and people who must also support them to ensure they have effective learning for their students. Uh, our time is fast spent, so we'll be expecting to get your feedbacks. Um, okay, back to you, um, the producer. Um, thank you. Um, thank you so much, Kenneth, and um, thank you very much, Babatunde, for the session today. Um, this was this has been very enlightening. So, do we have any questions? Please, you can type in your questions into the into the question area. If you have any questions, you need clarification on any aspect of um, the demo that has just been shown now. Okay, somebody is asking, can you please enlighten me more on the com commercial versions? Um, Sunday, we have a question here for enlightenment and the commercial versions. Okay, so okay, so I can take that. So um, I, 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 I suppose it is person that said he does not own a school because the free version, like the button they mentioned, um, the Office 65A1 is free for schools. Although there are also other versions of the Office 65 for education that is paid because of course they have more functionalities. But then if you don't own a school and uh, it cannot be verified that you run a school, you won't be able to um, harness uh, these uh, free functionalities. But if you're into learning, or maybe you run a private lesson and stuff like that, and you want to leverage uh, Microsoft Teams to teach your students, in that case, you can get uh, the commercial versions um, which you pay for, but they are not exactly like the of this one that we uh, demoed, which talks about assignments and everything around education. But well, it is a platform that you can use to also have some uh, teachings and impact knowledge, but it is not tailored for education. Um, so uh, instead of going into that, I would like you to send me a note or send a signal lines and we can engage you and provide more support and clarity. I, I hope that is fine. Thank you so much, Kenneth. So I'm putting I'm putting our email addresses in the in the Q and A area, so you can send us an email for further inquiry. Yeah. So um, we are happy to engage you. We are happy to have more sessions with any school that gets in touch with us. Yeah. So the licenses is free. We, we can discuss uh, when you get in touch with you on some level of course other services we can run for you. Uh, which, uh, of course, we'll, we can have that conversation. So we are glad to get your feedback. Okay. Um, um, I don't think there are other. Okay, so there are no new questions. I'm looking to the question area. I'm trying to see if we have other questions. OK, so there's a question here. How do you get to register the students, like say a class of 400? OK, so that, that's a that's a very okay. good question. OK, and like I said earlier, the, there are two ways to get in this done. The first way is to say you're working through your partner. Now, I would assume that the person who asked that question is possibly going to be deploying for the school. So from the 0365 Admin Center, we do have what we call the CSV formats. And the CSV format makes it possible for you to upload bulk, bulk emails and create bulk accounts in batches of 250 each. So it means that in two batches, you will have successfully created accounts for 400 plus hundreds other students. So that's the easy way to get that done. But in case you, are, you don't want to go through all of that, uh, so definitely reach out to Signal Alliance. They can always get you support in, in doing that. OK. Um. Thanks, Tunde. Then we have another question here. I'm a financial consultant. I have schools as clients. My question is, how can I partner with you 
what are my takes for this partnership? Yeah, so can it can it you do you want to can it okay so um you so can wait, see can, the can, questions can you drop us an email? questions please drop us yes, an yes, email yes. yes yes drop us an email and we'll be glad to uh, have a conversation with you honestly yes um yes we can do that we, we can partner just drop an email and we'll have sessions where we'll discuss it in details So there's a question somebody says, what do you think in a situation where parents are not collaborating based on the situation like data, electricity, and having two or more children using one device? What in the hell can we solve that problem? That's a very that's a very unique problem, and we've seen such problems come around. The thing is this, it's a, it has to do with communication with parents, okay? And we think fingers are not equal. Some parents have, some people do not have. Some people are willing to do, some people are not. In this situation, everybody needs to make some level of compromise and be able to come to a middle point. So it simply means that if classes you would normally need to hold for twice a week, the class can now hold once a week. If the classes would take 30 minutes or 45 minutes, the classes can now be adjusted to take 30 minutes. And in that situation, the teachers, the, the parents would also reason along to see that you're making some adjustments in that. But what's very important is to see that, yes, you are also bending forward a little and you are all able to meet at, at, at one single point. Parents would definitely collaborate, collaborate at some point. I'm not saying to come easily, but I'm saying that they understand that what you're doing is for the growth of their own children. And I'm not sure that there would be any parents who sees an opportunity for his or her own child to learn and to grow. I would not be willing to want to go the extra amount to make it possible. Like I said, I do take recognition of the fact that for some people it's not as easy as it sounds, but the communication is very important. In letting the parents understand that yes we are here for you we understand the challenges and we are trying to see how best we can make this happen so uh, my, my, my idea is to say that look in such classes try to see how best you can reduce the data usage tell the students to turn off their cameras so it reduces the data consumption at their hand if there's no need for them to see your face, then basically you also do not need to turn your home video. But if you are doing a live demo or you are sharing something, you can definitely do that. Part of what you can also do is to record the class ahead of time. When you record the class, you can convert the, and compress the video so that it's, a bit, it's reduced and you have a flipped class, in which case you only share the video that has been reduced to the student. So the next time you have a session with them, it's just a question and answer session. It's not a session that you are going video Video for 30 minutes, but you can do voice for the next 30 minutes because you already shared the material with them ahead of the class, and it's probably just like a 20 MB or 60 MB video. So the, it's just thinking about different ways to work around the situation, and communication is very important here. Yeah, very having, having very open communication with the parents. Fantastic. Thanks, Robert, uh, for that. So there's another question who says, of course, you will get the um, recordings. Uh, Debola will share the recordings with everyone. Who we'll have this OK, so a question also said, also, I have a few school administrators that may be interested, but who may not have been part of this webinar. All you need to do is share our email with the marketing at signalalliance.com. Once they get in touch with us, we'll be able to take up a conversation with them and support them in whatever way we can. Okay, um, I'm just trying to see if there are further questions so we don't skip. Uh, how do you start to create accounts before using in Teams? Okay, so uh, just like other user asks, how can you populate up to 400 students? That can be done using the CSV, like he said, or done manually. So, um, when we get in touch with us, we'll support you. But if you have an admin, a school IT admin, who is very conversant with Office 65, the person should be able to do that. But in the case where that is not possible, you can get in touch with us. We'll, we'll put you through on how that is done. What is the minimum um, number of uh, students or size of school before you will be entitled to the services of free licenses. Oh, okay, so to the best of my knowledge, and but okay, but you can take this, but I don't think there's any limitation. 
there are no limitations when it comes to numbers of students or numbers of teachers. What's very important is to decide to yourself as a school to say, do we want to do this by ourselves or we want to do this through a partner? I want to do this through Signal Alliance. In any case, you can always reach out to Signal Alliance to guide you on how best to go. But, but what is important is to know that we do not have any kind of, we do not have any kind of uh, seg segregation. We do not have any kind of discrimination. So whether your school has 10 people or you have 1 million students, you can always get on the platform. Okay, thank you. In Nigeria, where electric power is scarce and most private schools pay teacher poorly, what advice can you give if schools want to leverage on the MS teams? Secondly, how do you know the students are attentive individual classes? What in the please, you can just try and turn to it. I'm not, sure, I'm, not, I'm not sure I got the second question clearly. Uh, I got okay, the part so, of how do you know students are attentive. I'm not sure I got. Okay, the first question is in Nigeria, where there's electric power issues, and most private schools pay teachers poorly. What advice can you give if schools want to leverage on the MS team? Size one, and then how do you ensure students are attentive in the virtual class? That's that's very good. So st student engagement is core priority. OK, and student engagement, uh, that's why I said when I started the talk, I talked about the role of the teacher and I said that, look, technology does not replace teaching. Technology is just a medium to get teaching done. So the teacher's role is to be able to drive the emotional readiness and also be able to drive the presence of the students when it comes to the class. One of the things that you could do is to have the guidelines set up in your classroom and to say to them that, look, if you do X, Y or B or X, Y to Z in the classroom, this is the punishment. This is what is allowed to do. So first, for every online class, it is very important to set the rules and to set the guidelines. And trust me, I've seen this. We've worked with hundreds of educators and the moment they establish the rules with the students, they become obedient over time. So rules like do not turn off your do not turn your microphone on. Keep your microphone muted. If you want to ask a question, click on the race and future. Do not just unmute yourself and wait for me to call your name. That's one. The other part again is how do you disable a few things? So disabling things like chats. So what can a student possibly be doing when a class is going on? It could be chatting. So a student might be chatting with another student. So from the admin standpoint, the administrator of the Teams platform can actually disable chats between meetings or chats when a session is going on. You are saying that yes, students can chat later on to probably work on an assignment together. But the moment a class is going on, I do not want the student to be able to chat. Part of what you can do is to provide tactics like I'm going to call on you at any time, so make sure you're listening to me. And the same way we do it in the classroom by just calling on the students randomly and saying, okay, explain what I just said or type what I just said or type in your question. These are a few things that are tactics that educators can take advantage of in driving the engagement of the students when, we are with, when they're within the classroom. Now, uh, can you just remind me of, this, of the first question again? Sorry, Ken, yeah. it's just the beginning. It, 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 just the beginning. Yes, it's more about um, uh, a people staying, electricity, and how much okay. teachers are paid, yeah. and okay. what's advice um, to use teams. How does that? Uh, uh, how we team help situation anyway? Yeah, so this is it. I, I, I and you know, people. I always ask this question this way, and I say, it's a question of it's a question of goal. It's a question of what the school want to do. Okay. And there are two ways to think about it. The first way is to say, is my school ready to go remote learning? If the school is ready to go remote learning, then the question is, how long does the school want to go remote learning for? Okay, so schools that are willing to go remote learning possibly means that the teachers are not going to school, the teachers are not spending transport fare, the teachers are not commuting, but they are staying at home and they are teaching the students. Like I said earlier, it's a level of compromise and the idea is being able to identify how fast, can, how best can we compromise. So in that situation, the teacher basically has to take initiative to say, okay, look, how can I reduce the cost of my data since my school is saying I have to do it or I drop the job. 
So you might find yourself in a situation whereby the school is saying, look, if you cannot do remote teaching, we cannot provide you additional money. Meanwhile, you're not coming to school and you're not spending transport fare. Use the money that you're supposed to use for your transport fare to do your teaching. We cannot provide you additional funds. In that situation, you're already in a situation, or you're in that situation, you already have limited options. The, part, the next step for you as an educator is to think about how best can you now limit your cost on data. So it could be looking for a plan that allows you to do bulk upload, maybe on a Sunday plan that allows you to have more data for lower cost. It means you are reducing, you are recording all of your classes ahead and you're uploading them on Sunday when you have 200 Naira for 1.2 gig. So that's a tactic. It could be you have a midnight plan. So you record all of your classes ahead and you upload them at that night. That's another approach. That's another tactic. But another thing that you can do is that in such situations, you can turn off incoming video for yourself as an educator, which means you're not seeing the faces of the students, particularly when you do not need to see it, and you only turn your camera on. So Teams has also been optimized in ways whereby it rolls down and reduces the data consumption that you would have. Now, we also have ongoing conversations with MTN, and we have a roadhouse solution from the telcos, which means that if you go to Signal Alliance, you can get an engagement whereby you're not only getting 0365 but you're also getting subscription and when you get subscription it comes to your school at a discounted rate it means in that situation the school can get the discounted data rates and share it with all the teachers within the school environment so that's also another option that people can use when it comes to power i always tell people that look you need to have always have a backup plan and the question is how long do i have power for if you do not have power you have to get a class done then you have to think about how you use your mobile phone. Because the truth is that what I'm currently doing, apart from the fact that I'm presenting as a presenter, you can do almost every other thing on your mobile phone. You can share your screen on your mobile phone. You can answer questions on your mobile phone. You can re re respond to chats on your mobile phone. You can create assignments and greet them on your mobile phone. So if you have a smartphone that has internet connection, 80 to 90% of what you would want to get done can be done. What you're going to be faced with is the student getting the work done. But another thing that teachers need to do is to put in some time in space, I mean, to put in some space in the time in for the students to get used to the platform and also get their assignments done. So an assignment that you would ideally have given to the students for one hour or one day, you probably have to make it three hours or three days so that even if they don't have light today, they are still able to get it tomorrow. The most important thing when it comes to distance learning is to make sure that learning continues and learning does not stop. And that can be done in very innovative ways. So have a good assessment of your situation, have a good assessment of your, of your student situation, and have a communication between the, with your parents and find a middle ground to see how best you can address it. So that would be my recommendation in response to that, uh, as a response to that question. Thank you, uh, Rosinde. Okay. Um, is the same with Zozo Hub, and if no, is there any relationship? Is this solution same with Zoom Cloud? And if no, is there any relationship? Did you get that about Tinde? Yes, I got the question. I got the question. There's no relationship between the Zoom Cloud and the Microsoft Cloud. The Microsoft Cloud simply is on Microsoft engineering architecture, which brings in not just Teams for education, but brings in the entire Office, PowerPoint, Excel, Word, and uses one digital identity for you to get that done. And that clearly shows the difference. So for instance, you have the OneNote class notebook, and you need to just one email across all of the cloud apps to be able to have access. So the single email that a teacher is using for Teams is also the single email he or she is using for PowerPoint online, for Excel online, for Word online. It means that you have just one central identity and you are not worried with how you move information across those patterns. So it's clearly different. You have more features and that's just what it is from the Microsoft Teams and environments. Somebody said, how can you differentiate teachers from students in Office 365 portal while creating classes? Beautiful. Microsoft licenses based on two different levels, faculty and students. 
the moment you have your account set up, you're going to have faculty licenses for teachers and you have students licenses for students. When you are setting up the Teams environment, you would only be able to make a teacher a teacher if he or she has the faculty license. And you will only be able to make a student a student when he or she has a student's license. So it is pretty clear from the admin interface and there'll be no mix up at all. Okay, so what will it take a school to be onboarded on this platform? I think we'll discuss that. But in case uh, you were not here, we'll discuss it. Just send an email to marketing at signalalliance.com. And somebody says, can we have a repeat of this session? So some of us who can bring likely people, school owners, to have a feel of, uh, of about this presentation of the app. So, okay, so yeah, it's the conversation we can have with about team there to say, okay, can, can we do a repeat of this session maybe in the next two weeks or thereabout? We, uh, Watch out, we, we will have that conversation and, and, and get back to you. So same way you, you, you go to hear from us about this, we, we will get back to you. Okay, and uh, yeah, there are licenses. Are there licenses involved? Yes, there are licenses involved, but um, there are free licenses. The ones you, you there's zero dollar, the button they mentioned it, there's zero dollar licenses, and there are licenses you pay for. Of course, they have higher functionalities. But it's, it's, it's safe to start with the free ones, and see if there's need for you to move to the higher ones. But ideally, the free ones, you can do a great lot. So it's best you optimize what is free first before considering uh, the advanced uh, ones. But the button, I don't know if you want to add to that. Yeah, no, that's just uh, that's that's well answered. They, they have the, the zero dollar licenses, and you get Teams for Education with the zero dollar licenses. That's no end date. You can have unlimited number of students. So at the same time, but when you're trying to get things like paid applic applications, like PowerPoint, Excel, and Word, the Office applications installed, then you have to go to the paid one. And I'm sure you can always get this sorted from Signal Lines. Okay, um, I, I that is okay. the. Last question. So I think that would be all. Yeah, that would be yeah. all. Yes. Okay. Um. Okay. So thank you so very much, Babatunde. Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you to everybody that attended. So uh, we've put up our email. If you have further questions, further inquiries, please send us email at uh, marketing at signalalliance.com. I'm putting the email again in the chat box, and we will reach out to you. Uh, we're available to partner with you to set this up for your school or your educational institution or you have a referral for us please it is most welcome thank you so much so we're going to be ending the session now um you can send us an email and then we can take the conversation up from there so um yes and of course we're going to be sharing the recording with everybody everybody that registered for this session will share the recorded videos with you via mail so you can use it for reference and you can use that to also get back into with us all right so thank you so very much uh we're going to be ending the session now Thank you for your time. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you, everyone. All right.